For five decades, the best of the best have competed in motocross at historic High Point Raceway. And when the gate dropped today on 450 Moto 1, today's best, well, it was Chase Sexton on the Honda. Got out to the early lead, pulled away at an alarming rate, and hung on to win the moto. But now an overall victory is on the line. 30 minutes and two laps for someone like Sexton to etch his name in history as a High Point winner. It's round four of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, Mount Morris. Lucas Oil Stabilizer, High Point National. Jason Wigand and the six-time AMA National Champion, the Golden Boy, Brock Lover here. And Jason Thomas will be joining us patrolling the racetrack. 450 class has offered up great racing all season. But Chase Sexton tried to put an end to that. He just wants to dominate today. If there's ever some rider can say that they had nearly a perfect race, that was it. Chase Sexton, whole shot, disappear, didn't rarely put a wheel wrong and that was a phenomenal performance we'll show you more of that as he gets ready for his second moto but moto one we'll give it to you here in our recap and sexton starts have been good for the most part this year but this is how you want to do it a bunch of kawasaki's anderson and savachi almost coming together and sexton sneaks by yeah side by side with joey savachi there and savachi just gets a little bit of a bobble with his wheel but chase scoots around the outside heads down the iconic stair step here at high point raceway and just from there on sets disappears tony caroli tries to get in with joey savachi there just tucks craig. the front yep. oh yeah christian, christian craig, craig yep. sorry and uh he tucks the front and that was the end of the run for the nine-time world champ but we expect him to be back here in moto number two uh, a little bit further uh, ahead of that battle was this one. The teammates still fighting it out. Savachi and Anderson. This puts Anderson up to second. Savachi still had a good ride going. We were wondering if Anderson could maybe close on Sexton. We didn't catch it on camera, though. He would eventually make a mistake. Eli Tomac is also lurking in the number four position. And here he is getting third from Savachi. Yeah, it makes just an incredible run right here. Just early on the throttle early pivot and just makes a typical you know, patented Eli Tomac pass. So that's third. Then he's in second after Anderson falls. Anderson comes back and another classic Tomac versus Anderson duel. A couple times without Anderson had the pass. Tomac held him at bay. You think two decades of that, they get tired of it, but no way. So he, <laughs> and then Chase Sexton puts the uh, cherry on top of this uh, Sunday perfect moto and uh, wins, takes the win. Yep, so now he's got to replicate it in moto two. Tough one for uh, Ken Roxon, worst moto finish of the year for him in seventh. And Ryan Dungey actually got him on the last lap. And Sabachi in the top five, that's impressive. Yeah, it is. Joey's never really had, uh, I mean, a high point isn't the track that he's always had so many top tens or anything. I think he's only had two top tens in 450 class, but he comes back with a solid fifth place and then just one of his early races of the year. Yep, yep, just come back from injury. Okay, so Sexton's on top. Let's send it back down to Jason Thomas. So Chase Sexton, obviously, you know, his family has been behind him from the get-go. You show me a successful motocross racer, I'll show you a devoted family behind him. And as we enter the Father's Day weekend, I want to say thank you to, and happy Father's Day to my own father. And you can see all the love and support that Chase Sexton has had throughout the years. Yeah, my family is a, a big part of my racing. My dad is my proximate mechanic. Um, my family's through my amateur career, traveled to all the races with me in a motorhome. We uh, stayed for the week of racing. Obviously, amateur racing is kind of drug out, so it's a week long. And um, and then when I turn pro, my dad comes to every race. Like I said, he's my practice butt mechanic, kind of my trainer on the bike, and uh, it's been good. Obviously, my family's a big support. Um, when I come home, they're always uh, there for me, and we're all pretty close. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool, and they love coming to the races and love watching it. So I just uh, hope to do them proud. Well, it's hard to find a sport that isn't more family-oriented than motocross, and the support of a father is important, and happy Father's Day to all those fathers out there. I know I would have never made it to where I did in racing without my dad, too, so, you know, God bless them all. That's right. Great way to celebrate with Dad, either as a spectator here at the races at High Point Raceway. There's a few of them that are, of course, racing today, and Chase Sexton wants to make his family proud to get an overall win. There's a lot of other riders that want to do the same. Stay with us. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. 
boy, those are some beauties right there, huh? All <laughs> Honda Elsinores. A lot of us grew up racing those as young kids. Can-Am. So oh, Jones MX there. Yeah, Jones MX bikes, pretty rare bike there. Saw some Makos. I mean, we talked about the track was... Uh, it's really cool as we celebrate history all year long with Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, Jason Wygant, Brock Glover here, and Jason Thomas down on the racetrack. We're almost ready for 450 Moto 2, but we'll show you this high point racetrack one last time with the MX versus ATV Legends track map. Yep, Country Club of Motocross right here. And we got the uh, whole layout right in front of us here. Look at this. This is what one of my favorite corners. This is the old iconic ward board wood wooden boarded track or whatever you want to call the outside. They brought it back last year. I mean, it went away for quite a while, probably more than a decade, and they brought it back. You can see there's tire marks on it, roost marks, but that's just a symbol of high point. Yeah, and we saw some passing in 450 Moto 1. You saw the race recap there. Eli Tomac squaring riders up, making moves. So that is a passing zone. It's not just a gimmick. Shout out to Henry Miller. Privateer out of Minnesota. Finished right around that top 15 last week, so he collects the FMF Privateer Power Award winner. Good job, Henry. Now time for the KTM Keys to the Moto. Brock, what do we need to do here at High Point? Well, the broken record, get a good start. Both motos again. We talked about that. Ken Roxon, you know, if he doesn't get a good start or someone doesn't get a good start, they don't run up front. And then line selection. You're going to have to pick good lines. They're changing all the time yeah, all every lap they seem to be changing so inside out so can't wait to see uh see what happens here sexton looking for the one one like he did at our season opener in southern california trying to show that wasn't a hey round one is wild hey he just has the track in california dialed he's trying to bring it all the way back here to pennsylvania and replicate it again on the 23 revs are up gates down Rocks in a much better start. Oh, can he hang on the inside? There's a lot of bumping and banging. Is that Ryan Dungeon in the lead with the Motosport.com whole shot? Out of retirement and into the first turn first. That was a fantastic jump by Ryan Dungey. I think he was right next to the doghouse, but Chase Sexton, our first moto winner, is now in second place already entering the uh, stair step downhill. Hey, you could argue that was Dungey's best moto so far this year, that first moto, and he is flying here early, put a little distance, but now it's the Honda boys ganging up on him. Sexton and Roxon second and third. Yep, Christian Craig looks like he's in fourth, mixing it up a little bit with Jason Anderson, and while he did that, Bam Bam Barsha was able to work his way into fourth place on the outside. Look at Roxon, he's trying to get Sexton, and Sexton now attacking Dungey. Three rider battle for the lead at high point. Yep, this is just classic Woo! Dungey getting the whole shot here. Now Roxon's on the inside of Sexton. Sexton playing a little conservative on the first lap. But I don't know how Roxon did that. There was nothing on the inside there. No berm, dry dirt, still made the pass. We're on the beta drone cam. Roxon back to his old tricks, going very fast on lap one. Can he get Dungey? Yep, coming down that hill back there where he made that run down the hill. We were on a beta cam, a drone cam, but I'm telling you, he got on the rear wheel. Roxon just pinned it down there, was able to wheelie down, get a great drive and get a run on Dungey right here. He's making the move. There it is. So Roxon to the lead. And Sexton, you know, will want to follow his teammate through. But Dunge was very good down on the inside of this corner of the previous moto. And he's working it on Roxon, and it works again. Yep, and Roxon hit a little rut on the outside, lost some drive, and here comes Chase Sexton on the inside. Three rider fight early on and they're all over this racetrack sexton trying to get roxon roxon trying to get dungy anderson closing from fourth yep sexton's got to make this move soon and get around right now, get around ken roxon because he doesn't want to go up and they water the track right there ken Ro and sexton Ooh. got sideways ken roxon nearly contact <laughs> this is just total mayhem i can't even can't even describe it fast enough just watch <laughs> dungy Lost the back end. He had it pinned around that corner over the ruts to try to hold Roxon off. He did. Then Roxon gets him in the next corner, and now he knows he's going to have his hands full. Sexton and Anderson are right there. Hey, this is what Ryan Dungy signed up for. He comes out of retirement. He wanted to be in the battle, and he is. He is right in the heat. <laughs> right in the frying pan they took him. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, Anderson back there in fourth wants to come join this crowd. Got Jason and. An then you got Justin Barsha in fifth, and Eli Tomek. We're finally seeing where he is in sixth place. So Rock's in the lead. Now his teammate Sexton wants to take second from Dungey. Let's see if he can lock it down, and he does in the left-hander. He does. He knows he has to get around Kenny Roxon fairly soon because Jason Anderson's not going to sit back there and not start rubbing on this. And then Eli Tomac coming from behind too, so we never know. So Chase Sexton 
needs to just go do what he did the first moto. Get out front and start trying to disappear. We've seen some good battles between Roxon and Sexton, the Honda teammates, so far this year. We see Anderson now on that green Monster Energy Kawasaki. Wait a minute. Tunji. He is feisty today, going back after Sexton. You know, we didn't see the real real Ryan Dungey last week at Thunder Valley. He was sick, he was fighting, you know, breathing, and then the elevation was even twice as hard. So now we get to see Ryan Dungey and what he's capable of. Oh, the fans love this. Retired after winning a third straight Monster Energy Supercross title back in 2017. A lot of rumors of a lot of comebacks through the years, but after five years passed, I don't think anyone expected it. And he is back. He might not be quite all the way back where he was, but he's not far off. He likes this inside. Can he use it to get Sexton back? Almost. This, this is incredible. There are a lot of people that are saying Ryan Dungey was going to be lucky to even sniff, get in the top 10 and sniff in the top five would be just impossible, but he's showing them all wrong right now. Well, he said first lap in early race that intensity was going to be tough to find, but he's got that figured out today. He is absolutely sending it against Roxon and Sexton, who have sprint speed to burn. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Dungey's had six career starts, I believe, here at High Point Raceway in his career. He's got two overalls, five moto wins, so he's 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 familiar with running up front at High Point. Uh, but the good news for Dungey is that he's quick, but the bad news is so is the rest of his field, and Jason Anderson just squared him up. Uh, Jason Anderson has got the speed to take it all the way to the front here. No, no question about that. So we're going to see what happens here. And Jay Dunge, you got Eli Toe back there as well, the three-time <laughs> champ of this class. I think now he's getting a quick reminder. It's like, okay, I, retirement wasn't so bad, but uh, this is what he, he signed up for. And I know he's loving it, but uh, Eli Tomac's making a run down the inside of Jason Anderson even. So Eli Tomac looks like he's going to make a pass stick here, possibly on Dungey. Ooh, no! Oh, Tomac made a mistake. Dunge drives yeah. it in. Tomac went to that outside rut, stuffed it in there, and it looked like his whole front wheel just buried. The fans here are loving this and they're happy to see Ryan Dungey back. Yeah, that's right. Wheaties box, that's when Dunge was number one in this sport. Really took it to some mainstream levels of the Wheatie box. And you can hear when he got this whole shot, this crowd came to life. They love this. They they did. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas with Dungey's mechanic. Carlos Rivera, Ryan Dungey mechanic. Now, he hasn't raced here in seven years. Gets out there, get the whole shot, running around with these guys. You have to be blown away at how resilient this guy is seven years later. Oh, man, it's unbelievable. The whole shot right there makes it all. I mean, he's up front, right in their pace, and, uh, I mean, we are excited to have him here. Yeah, this is a 20, this is a 22-year-old level, not a 32-year-old level, so uh, I think we're all a little bit shell-shocked. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, but the guy is so talented, and, uh, I mean, you don't, know, you don't forget how to ride, so that's, you can tell. Thanks, guys. Yeah, he is fighting back. Anderson got him, but look at Dungey. He's got some crafty lines out here, and he wants them back. That inside line looks like it's working. It's, maybe it's inside of the old inside line, but he's uh, he's made a nice run up that hill. He's doing a good... Gosh, it's just amazing what he's accomplishing right now, running around 32 years old. Yeah, exactly, but it's really the time off. Oh, where? Look at what? <laughs> Eli Tomac, just a quick strike outside to inside. Gets the move. Yep, he went all the way around the outside, carried a ton of speed, and look he's what he's got Anderson. right here, too. Just got Anderson. What? Talking about finding a line where there wasn't a line. There it is, going into the old uh, war board corner and making a move around both riders in, in one short order. <laughs> Dunn's got to be like, what? This Sam Hill, I'm riding well, and I just got picked off by two guys. That's it. the intensity right now. Anderson, oh, almost comes together with Tomac. Wow. Tomac went from, wait a minute, I just got a two for deal, but then now <laughs> Anderson, I, Anderson's got a lot of fight in him. He, he wants to get one of these wins. That, that one win at Hangtown for overall, but he wants another Moto win, no question. Well, if you're Tomac and Anderson and you've got championship aspirations, you cannot let the Honda teammates do what they're doing right now. They're marching away again. Roxon with the lead, Sexton in second. Yep, Roxon showing the speed. I mean, that start, this is just shows the difference between Ken Roxon. We barely even mentioned him. Now when we watch this on the uh, screen, you can see the fact that Roxon has the speed, but when you did a bad start, you're not able to battle for a front. ETS Racing Fuels drone cam here, and we get a look side number plate dangling on the 23. Yeah, I don't know if he had contact with something and broke it or just simply got torn out of the torn out or a bolt might have come and loose. And sometimes when you have contact, you can tear the sit, can tear the side panel out. The big question is, Brock, as Dungey goes back after uh, Anderson <laughs> is uh, back to our ETS Fuels drone, do you think that side plate might make a difference in Sexton's riding? It can if it gets up towards the front in the boot area, but uh, Sexton 
Sexton looks like he's able to keep it behind his leg. If we'll see, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Well, Tomac is on a charge. There's the number three in the number three spot on the Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing Machine. Don't you did it? He got Anderson back. No way. He just passed one of the winners of Hangtown. That's amazing, Dungey. So let's keep an eye on. We're coming up on that section where Eli Tomac got the two for deal earlier, lap earlier. Let's see what he's got in him right well, here. Well, he used that line. He got yep. right up on Sexton. Now here's right. the other line that he had where he made the pass on Anderson. Sexton went inside. Yep. Didn't let uh, Tomac have it. Yep. Block just right in the same line. So switch it up here. Tomac's got to be fastest on track right now. He quickly ate up the gap that Sexton and Roxon had on him. He wants to get the points back that he lost in moto number one to Sexton. Starting to remind me of the Eli Tomac of the second moto of Hangtown. What do you think? Yeah, that was a spectacular one between Sexton and Tomac. Back to this battle. Dungey and Anderson in the FMF Battle Box. It is Renaissance Day for Dungey. It was impressive considering how long he's been off the first couple of rounds, but he's gone to a different level today. Meanwhile, we get to watch Tomac and Sexton fight for second, and Roxon's not that far ahead. Yep, mentioned it to Tom. Uh, right before the race started, I walked down and talked to Ryan Dungey, and I said, I mean, tell me, no, <laughs> straight up, are you healthy or are you yep. not? And he's yep. like, I'm good. I'm, I'm better than much, much better last week. So he, he looked like it. Yeah, taking big steps, no doubt, the Red Bull KTM team. But how about this battle? Tomac second in Moto 1, third in Moto 2, but he wants to get back around Sexton, and they're inching up on the race leader, Ken Roxon. It's pretty neat that we have to split the screen in order to see all the action out there. This is a... Uh... This has been this way all year, yeah. and we've just, it's been fantastic here at High Point Raceway. Oh, Tomac has a line on the inside. He pulled up alongside. Yep, he just made it look easy. Like, he really wasn't pushing that hard, but he was on the inside, did a perfect line there. Mm, looks like Sexton has to start riding defensive now. Cover these insides. No, he's going to go way wide here. Yep, Tomac goes right back in that mid. Whoop, big old hook in the end of that berm there. You could just see the G-forces, the jolt that uh, Eli Tomac's body took as the track is getting rougher and rougher. Unbelievable, the racing we've seen this year. Sexton able to hold Tomac off and keep his teammate in check. Okay, this is the outside line we saw Eli use earlier that had some speed, but uh, Chase Sexton was able to go inside and carry his equal, equal amount. And here we go. They both are starting to catch Ken Roxon. Now we've got a full three-way battle for the lead. <laughs> exactly what we wanted to see. Incredible. This, uh, okay, this is uh, edge of the seat stuff now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, three different lines into that billboard turn. Roxon looking for the edge of the racetrack, just trying to find anything smooth into that corner. Sexton follows. Tomac don't care. Yes. He'll go somewhere else. Side panel does not seem to be affecting uh, Chase in any negative manner here. So we'll see as they head down the stair step downhill. Sexton has a couple shots at it now. He's pulled up right behind Roxon. Yep, front end a little high. Eli means he's getting on the gas right up to the launch point of the jump. <laughs> he's not... <laughs> this is such great footage from the drone cam here. It's... Uh... It's what we've come to expect. As you said, the racing this year, practically every moto has had a battle. Now Sexton pulled away big time in moto one. Behind him, it was a duel, and now he's in that fight. Look at that crowd at high point. What Look, more could you ask for? What a massive crowd here on Father's Day weekend. Hey, a lot of fathers out here, really. This is what they, how they want to spend their Father's Day weekend, bringing their family to the motocross races, and uh, hats off to y'all. So Tomac in third. He was side by side with... Sexton the last time through here, and he does it again. Yep, feet off the peg style, almost like he's just trail riding, but he's going so fast doing that. Makes it look easy. And Sexton on the outside here again. He and Roxon on the outside. Oh, Tomac can get that corner right, and obviously that rut's not doing him any favor. Oh, no, Sexton's scrubbing, and he wants to take the lead. Almost collides with Roxon. <laughs> right hit the launch point. Look at this, launching down the hill. Gets a bigger jump, starting to release the brakes. He can make it work. Oh, then the ruts are, see, they're just deteriorating so much, and Kenny's got a little more speed out of that wide line, able to carry it all the way up the hill, but this isn't, uh, Sexton's not going to give up. Ah, Sexton did everything right, but that rut let him down, and that allows Roxton to survive the attack. Three rider duel here at high point, as close as you like it, into the billboard turn. Yep. Tomac kept, went the outside, carried a little more speed. Sexton's got a great drive out, pull alongside, Ooh. but the next one's a right-hander, so... 
able to block. I'll now, if he keep, yep, he keeps blocking too much. Tomac's going to get a wheel under Sexton. Roxon has said he wants to be relentless and fight for it this year, and he does, man. Every time they get to him, he gets the bike wide, and they cannot get by. I mean, Kenny Roxon. I mean, you can't, how do you say about a world champion, a person of his level, a national champion? But he's showing more fight than I've seen in a long time, and I think we'll have to all agree with that. Yeah, no doubt, and that's making life tough on Sexton. And Tomac is there lurking. What a battle! God, they're all in the same frame. <laughs> it's just seeing this over and over and over. And don't forget, we got Dungy and Anderson back <laughs> just uh, for fourth and fifth behind these two. Brock, RB3. when you're in these battles and you've been in them, I mean, it's intense. But can you have fun at the same time? Can you enjoy this? Oh, you, as Caroli's out, unfortunately, two motos in a row for our world champ. I mean, you can have fun, honestly. Okay. But when you're in them, they're pretty intense, and and, and you just you just want to. I mean, when you win, of course, oh, that was super fun. When you get second or third, it's like, yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. what happened to Tony Caroli? Let's see what Jason Thomas knows. JT. So Tony Caroli went down in a heap with Christian Craig in that first moto. And I spoke with uh, team manager Ian Harrison, and he said he had a, a hurt knee coming into this moto and was going to try to ride, and obviously it's just not working out for him. Uh, tough break. He was planning on maybe a break after this, so that's almost a guarantee, I would think, now. As Sexton attacks Roxon on the outside, he's quick over the top of this jump, and this time he uses it to get to lead. Yep. Yeah, lap before we saw that same exact move where he tried to get it. He's, he was so close, but this time he's like, I'm going to make it work. So he charged harder coming in, in the, entering the corner and was able to carry even more speed out and made it work. So great pass. But Kenny Roxon, look at this. That's what we talked about. He's relentless. He's going right back at it. Man, it looked like Tomac was in position several times to get Sexton. Yeah. Now he's on the ropes. He's got to try to prevent Sexton from getting away. Roxon, oh, that's oh. mistake from Sexton. Roxon's going to give it full send and take the lead back. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. I'm sure we're going to get that one on a replay, Woo right? Oh, Roxon ran him out of real estate. Oh, and here comes Tomac. Tomac almost took advantage. Well, they needed that break. I think Sexton was going to try to get away. They didn't let him. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% of your insurance with Geico. You're going to need it. I mean, we are up to almost full contact between these three. Hey, can we set back that time a little more? We want to see more of this. this 15 is not enough. Okay. Oh, no. I want 20 or 30 more of this. <laughs> now it's Tomac. He's got the opportunity to get Sexton. Oh, no. Sexton almost threw it away. Yeah, Sexton's got to regather himself here, kind of get his game plan back on. He's got the speed. He's got the ability to do it. But a couple of mistakes on the same lap has got, got the feathers ruffled a little bit. How this changed, about four corners, five corners to go. I thought Sexton was going to check out, and Ryan Dungey is there and fourth. Let's take you through this exchange. Yep, you can see right here with Sexton. He hits this corner. Let's see. Yep, back in. Yeah, he tries to pivot to go down to the inside, it looks like, and his rear wheel was already committed to the outside rut, in the, and he ended up just getting sideways there. That was kind of a last-minute line change. Uh, he tried to tried to drop down to somewhere he had no business going, I guess. Brian Touch, he's going after Chase Sexton for third in this moto. This is full vintage Ryan Dungey now. They couldn't uh. drop him. Is it okay if we have air horns and cowbells in here? <laughs> I know, I want to do it. The fans are doing it. Dungey's got him. Dungey's on the inside. Sexton's great over this jump. That's where he took the lead. A lap ago, he took the lead there. Now he's fighting to hold on to third. That's how close this racing is. Oh, my goodness. And where's Anderson? He's now, he's, has, he's still three or four seconds back. I go, is this thing going to turn into a five-way battle? How, uh, Dungey's just being so impressive this moto. This is incredible. Oh. Look at this. Tomac going for the lead, and he was able to pivot out of that rut and make a move that I... Man, where did he find that speed? Yes. Eli Tomac was third one lap ago. Now he's in the lead. I saw him pivot out of that rut and just grab the full handful of that YZ450 power to the ground and just blew by Roxon. That was uh, more than impressive again. Man, did this change in a hurry in one lap. Sexton has gone from first to third, and Tomac has gone from third to first. And the relentless Roxon, he has shown some fight this year. Does he have a charge in him? Because when Tomac gets the lead of the second half of the race, you rarely get them back. And listen to this crowd and watch this crowd. This is amazing what they've been traded to today. And fans of Chase Sexton will be happy to look like he has regained, you know, gathered himself up here and he's kind of regained his momentum. He looks like he's making a move back on Ken Roxner, closing in or hopefully get back into another battle for the lead here because he needs to, he needs to start clipping away some of these points.
Well, we came into this race with three overall winners in the first three races. Obviously, Eli Tomac is the prime candidate to be winner number four. If he gets his moto win, he'll have it. 2-1. He'll be an overall winner for the first time this year. And he is putting the hammer down. Yeah, he seems to be doing better in the second motos each week. I mean, he just really coming coming around and, and just, I don't know if it's taking him longer to learn the track or just get a momentum or also sometimes it's hampered by starts, but uh, we'll see what happens. Send it down to JT. Yeah, so Eli Tomek hasn't ever raced any of these tracks on a Yamaha. And I think we need to remember that because each time he goes out, he's getting a little bit better. He and the team are working on settings and you can see that improvement throughout the day in these second motos. He just looks almost unbeatable. Here's something so odd. Tomac has three moto wins at this track, all in the second moto. And he's looking to do the exact same thing today. So something about High Point, it comes to him later in the day. And now he's in position to get the overall win. Lots of racing still to come. We'll take one quick commercial break. Ten minutes and two laps to go. Rocks and Sexton Dungey still battling behind ET3, who's getting away at High Point. Tomac negotiating the lap traffic. He has flipped the switch. Two laps ago, he's in third. Yeah, it's an incredible statistic that all of his moto wins here, all in the second moto. Odd, right? Yeah. He uh, clearly gets more comfortable as a racer, and the rougher the track gets, he rises to the top of there. And Sexton and Roxon having a duel for second and third, and Dungey not too far behind them. It's Anderson who's got to figure out a way to respond here. They put a pretty good amount of distance into him. Plessinger, one of his better motos of the year, in sixth. Craig, seventh. Barsha, Savachi, Makarat, top ten. Fans here loving it. You can hear him in the hillsides. Nice little body adjustment, little body English there. Bike through inside. Counteracted his body to... This Plessinger seven. catching Anderson. Boy, oh boy, this is a change of events here. Mm -hmm. Jason Anderson, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but he's slipped, falling back, and Plessinger's coming forward. Yeah, we thought that uh, Anderson might make a run for the Moto win when he was around Dungey in fourth. Dungey got him back, and now he's got his hands full for fifth. anniversary season of pro motocross is brought to you by geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on motorcycle insurance motosport.com make your next ride your best ride and by monster energy unleash the beast GoPro track preview, that's what High Point looks like to race, but it's even more chewed up and beat up now. Battle for second is on between the Honda teammates, and it looks like Sexton was able to get around Roxon. Yeah, Sexton was just almost perfect, perfect riding the first moto, and I expected to see more of that the second one. He had a couple little mistakes in there. Maybe rattled him a little bit, but I was curious if he's going to regather himself, and he has now, and he's got himself back into second place. You see who's behind Roxon still. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Dungey, man, he won't go that away. Number five. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a massive improvement. Dunge was down about a minute by the end of a moto last week. I know he's under the weather, but it had been 40 to 50 seconds off the lead at the end of the motos as we're watching on the beta motorcycles, drone, drone cam. So between 40 seconds to a minute had been the deficit from Dunge to the lead. Most of the motos this year, 6.8 down to the lead. Massive gains today. Would that be the most improved rider, I would say? Yes. We're going to hand out an award, a Jason Wycan award. Okay. The, the Weege Award for the most improved, and, and number five is uh, on his way to winning that award. Okay, so he could contend for a podium in this moto. I mean, he was able to take the measure of Roxon in moto one. Roxon definitely better in moto two, but Dungey's not out of it yet in fourth. And Chase Sexton, the overall would slip away unless he can mount a charge and go back after Tomac. Yep, the points have both uh, have 45 or 47 points when they're all done, but unfortunately the overall victory and that uh, trophy and the overall bonus and all yeah. the things that come along with it are going to go up with Eli Tomek. So Chase has got to find a little speed here, and he's only got seven minutes to do it in two laps. He looks like he's finding it, though. 
Yeah, he was the first moto. It was beautiful. He's still riding very, very well. And it looks like he's trying his best, but Tomac just somehow, I don't, don't know what it is. He just elevates himself in those second motos, and we've talked about it. You know, all of his wins have come in the second moto. Yeah, yeah, he's had uh, working on his fourth 450 moto win at this track. All four would be in the second moto. Critical juncture here. Sexton's going to try to put one more charge in and keep Tomac honest. It all broke loose in about two and a half, three laps. Tomac went from third to first. And Sexton went from first to third. And now Sexton's got a hole he's got to dig himself out of. As we watch this battle, Roxon versus Dungey. These guys duked it out for the championship in 2014, 2015. 2016, Dungey got hurt, but I don't know if anyone had an answer for Roxon in that year. He was so good back in the old RCH Suzuki days. Point being, so many great races between these two in the past. I don't think anyone expected to see any more because Dungey was retired. Interesting thing, we talked to Roxon last night in our pre-race show, and he said they'd become such good friends, he and Dungey. He was talking to him almost daily at times last year and never thought they'd be racing again. Really became great friends in the Dungey's post-racing days, and now look, they're duking it out for a podium. I wonder if Kenny's <laughs> regretting telling him some of those inside yeah, yeah, dark, maybe. <laughs> dark secrets. Like, what the heck did I spill <laughs> spill my guts to Ryan Dungey for? Now i got to battle the guy. So, uh, no, it's just fun to watch right here. I'm sure they have the, you know, the utmost respect for each other on the track. They're two of some of the, you know, most respectful riders. They show each other a lot of, uh, you know, space. They don't try to jam it in. But here we got Ryan Dungey right here running. Right on now, the right here. He's going for the podium. Yeah. Yeah, nice third. line. That was a very good line. When the track, to me, when the track deteriorates that much and all the lines get kind of bad, then you got to opt back towards the inside line because that's the shortest distance. You're just covering less real estate. So, as a, again, that's what Ryan just did there, and it looked like a good move. And I think even where that line he just did there, going back to the inside. Look, everyone was excited, I think, to see Ryan Dungey back at the races. It's great for the fans. It's great for the teams, the sponsors, and all that. But I think we all were wondering... What was he looking for? Is he looking to just come to the races and do well? Do you want to be back where he used to be on the podium? He has made notice as Roxon now comes back at him that podium dreams might not be that far from reality. Roxon, I thought, was going to get him back. No, Dungey fends him off. This is a completely different story than the first three rounds. This is, absolutely. And then there's probably a little caveat, and everybody wanted to see Ryan Dungey come back. I think Lindsay, his wife, would probably... Okay, probably, you're right. Maybe she would, <laughs> she'd be voting a little differently on that one. But, uh, you know, I think now that she sees him doing what he loves to do and performing at this level, it's, it's nice. Nobody wanted to see him come back and struggle to get a top ten, but this is what we... Didn't ex all truly completely expect. Maybe he expected it, but this is what we all are treated to. Yeah, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. He's making believers out of it because to think that he's going to get back to his old level, contend for wins or podiums, might have seemed far-fetched. But I know it's just one moto, but it's hard to doubt the guy right now. And you know Millville's still on the schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spring, yep. Spring Creek is his home track, and I really am looking forward to when we get there and watch that number five KTM get around the track. And, Ryan Dungey at the helm. You know, yeah, I got to throw that out there. Some of the tracks we've just done, Hangtown. Oh, no. Oh, oh Roxy just stalled it. I thought he might have had a yeah. bike problem. Thank goodness for the electric starts. Yeah. I think he either stalled it. Yeah, I think or it looked like a stall, not a just in-between gear situation. Uh, but uh, the, the track we just went to, Thunder Valley, I don't think that's one of Dungey's best tracks. And same thing with Hangtown. I, I, Dungey's consistent. I don't think the variance is huge. But we're definitely coming up to tracks that probably work a little better for him. So we could be seeing more of this to come. Dungey started it with a whole shot, and that lit this crowd up. And three-time champion of this class, back out of retirement, motosport.com whole shot right here. Coming right out of the center there. He has, I think he was next to the doghouse, but you see him right here on the outside. Yeah, sorry, I think it was a 250, 250 shot start. there. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we got the 250 start there. Unfortunately, that's a... Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dunge was able to control it and make this thing happen. And uh, Rodwell got shuffled. Thought that might be the end of it. out Jason Anderson. Then caught back up to the lead group and has out Ken Roxon to move into this number three position. So many great stories. I mean, with the story we have up front, Eli Tomac going to try to make four, moto or four overall winners in four races this year. I'll show you the motorsport.com whole shot again. This time will be 450 clips. Sorry about that. So yeah, Dungey's coming right just inside the middle there. 
dark jersey and holds the perfect corner. Apex tight. Flat out clean hole shot. Jason Anderson tried to sneak up on the inside, but uh, Ryan had no part of that. So there it is. Dungey the whole shot and able to hang tough this entire moto right now. But it's Eli Tomac fending off the challenges. Sexton got to second and was 4.8 down. It's 5.4. So Tomac just ever so slightly edging away. Yep. See if Dungey can deliver a moto podium here. Yeah, Eli's not letting up at all right now. He's definitely putting some fast laps in. And then you've got Chase Sexton, second fastest rider on the track, and that's why he's in second place. But Tomac is not giving it up. I mean, Chase has been able to match or get close, a couple tenths behind, but he's not turning in anything faster than Eli. We go back to Ryan Dungey here and a shot of the arm for the Red Bull KTM team. It has been a struggle for quite some time for them uh, outdoors. Rough season for them with Marvin Muscan and Cooper Webb below their normal standards last year. And uh, been a slow start for Aaron Plessinger. Saw, saw some uh, signs of life from Tony Caroli, but unfortunately that got undone today with the crash. So they needed this boost. Uh, it's not going to be an overall podium for... Oh, no. I miscalculated. Dungey's looking at the overall podium with the tiebreaker. He and Anderson are tied on points. He's going to go to the podium today if it ends like this. And, you know, this high point crowd here, they are already looking for a reason to cheer. And they are a knowledgeable group of fans. They know motocross well. They know the tradition and the history. And I can't wait to see if Ryan Dungey gets up on the podium, he will, he will get a hero's welcome. No doubt. I mean, they went nuts just with a whole shot. Podium, unbelievable. As for Eli Tomac, you knew that an overall win was coming. You wanted to see it poetically at round four so we could get the four winners in the four rounds. We have it. And there is something about specifically the second moto at, uh, at high point. You can't beat the guy. After the last lap at Thunder Valley, though, I'm not counting it. So we just, All right. just now the, the, <laughs> the 30 minutes is about to expire here in a few seconds. And then we're going to have a two-lap board come out. And Eli's just got to get the two laps put in the, in the books. And then we'll see if he gets that uh, overall. And then we will have four winners in four rounds. But, yes, uh, yes. Yep. So. Uh, we're watching Anderson here. And he's been battling with Plessinger. And then Craig. Craig in the number seven spot. That's the blue Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha. Anderson right ahead of him on the Monster Kawasaki. So Anderson not out of it yet. He's still got a fight on his hands from Craig. If Anderson can pass Plessinger, he would repass Dungey in points and take that podium away. But he's got a lot of work to do to get there. Yes, he does. And actually, it's kind of a surprise for, you know, he... Anderson was right there on the start on Dungey's shoulder, so he was kind of in sec he was second place, and I, I think for him to slip back to a sixth place is surprising all of us. Not sure if that hand's bothering him or just uh, what's going on exactly, but he's not having his best ride, that's for sure. That's right, and uh, just going to be edged out with the... Here, we're going to show you the gap. There it is. The gap between Plessinger and Roxon. So that's the difference in the overall. Uh, sorry, Plessinger and Anderson. That's the difference to the overall podium today. Anderson would have to bridge that gap. And remember, Plessinger caught and passed him. I talked to Plessinger in practice today. He was really happy where they've gotten the bike. It had been a struggle the first three rounds. He actually said the rare words of perfect, which you don't often hear riders say. <laughs> exactly. Uh, first moto was only so so, but this is. Not just for Dungey, but also a sign for Plessinger. It's much better. It is. The KTM, I mean, they had to do a complete plan B here for their outdoor championship. They didn't have their, you know, they started off the 2022 season. That's not the team they were expecting to see compete in this 50th anniversary of the AMA Pro Motocross Series. And uh, to bring over a Tony Caroli, to have to bring out a <laughs> Ryan Dungey off the couch, and then uh, Aaron Plessinger coming back from a little bit of an injury there. So it's a different different plan, and they're all starting to finally come uh, come to fruition, and, and it's good to see. Yeah, Plessinger still, oh, oh feet off the pegs there. Wait a minute. Nope, announcer's curse. something He's got happened. a problem. He's off the track. Can he recover? Uh, he's running an arm brace, by the way. He's coming back from a broken arm. So now Anderson yeah. has another shot at it. That was interesting. It looked like he was, that was a, he went off the side of the track. I'm not exactly sure what happened. We'll have to see that again. We were looking from an overhead shot of a drone. But uh, look, he's waving. Yeah, look he's at, waving him on. And that's going to take the overall podium away from Dungey. It's going to move Anderson back. I don't know if Anderson knows this map, but it's going to put him back into third overall. He's, I think he's hurt. He's big time hurt. Is it? Oh, no. 
just when things finally were turning back in his direction. Again, came into this series off of a broken arm in Supercross. Dunge would need to get Sexton, which is going to be a tall order, to stay on the podium. Still a moto podium for Dunge. Perseverance for Anderson going to pay off. Not his best ride today, but a podium potentially nonetheless. Yeah, that's very, very disheartening. I'm fortunate for Aaron Plessinger. I'm not yeah. exactly sure what he hurt. We all, it's been a painful day for him. We saw something happen in practice earlier, too, mm -hmm. that uh, he uh, took a little while to recover from. I spoke to him about that, and so it's, uh, he's, he's had some pain today. So. See the uh, event points as they run. The way the overalls work, it's championship points per moto. We have five riders in that one corner, and only <laughs> one of them's on the lead lap. So good job, Chase, negotiating away. Good job, the other riders, for uh, yielding to the one of the front runners. Sexton is trying to bring it home. That would be second overall today. You know he wants wins. White flag is out, but you're not going to catch Eli Tomac on this racetrack. You're going to have to hope for a mistake. It's unfortunate what happened to uh, Plessinger. We'll try to sort it out here. Catch that right leg in the rut. Yep, and then he rode off and immediately reached down to Looks like he touched his, like, reached down with his left hand to hold his right knee, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah. He does catch the right leg right here. Right here. Hops over. Boom. Catches it. And he then, knew something Then he right. reaches down with his left arm. His knee. Yeah, we'll have to find out. But, yeah, it's uh, very unfortunate. No, not a good sign. It, it's not just that it takes the podium away from Dungey, but Plessinger was finally putting a pretty solid moto of his own together here. As we were getting to some tracks that were better for him as well. And he had the vibes this morning. Man, hope that's uh, nothing too, too serious. He needs some momentum. We go back to Eli Tomac. And this is what he does. End of the day, tracks at its worst. This is where he's at his best. Yeah, he's really impressive. Second moto, he's turning into Mr. Second Moto here, especially at the High Point Raceway. I mean, this is where all his moto wins have come in the second moto. So. Turning in a really good run here. Chase Sexton, unfortunately, thought after that flawless first moto, it's like, who could possibly beat me in the second one? And then uh, here Plessinger's we are. still circulating, by the way. We just caught that there. That was our shot. Plessinger's going to try to finish this moto, try to grind out some points. And how much of an all-timer is Eli Tomac? He is currently tied with none other third all-time in this class. Bob Hurricane Hanna with 27 overall wins to move him into a solo position of third. The only riders ahead of him, of course, Ricky Carmichael, who holds pretty much all the records in this division, and Ryan Dungey, who's second all-time in overall wins. So that's big for ET3. But he's worried about the here and the now. Getting that win, here he comes, and making up some ground in the series standings and getting the momentum that comes with it. There it is, Eli Tomac, 28th career overall victory in the 450 class. The Lucas Oil Pro Motocross is coming down to the wire. Dungey and Roxon. Did Roxon take it away? Roxon took it away. He said he's going to be relentless, and he was. Completely relentless, and that's uh, that's it. Hats off to Roxon on that one, too. That's an impressive ride and a fight back at the end. That's what he said he was going to do this year. Be relentless to the end, and he got it done late in this one. Takes the, takes the modium, po moto podium away from Ryan Dungey. So Roxon, those are valuable championship points from him. He takes two more with a late pass. No stopping Eli Tomac. When high point. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. We are back. Tremendous racing again in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross in this 450 class. We now have four winners in four rounds. Eli Tomac on top. JT. Eli Tomac, your overall winner and second moto winner. That's four times you won the second moto here at High Point. What is it about the second moto that does so well for you? Seems like I got to figure out my lines in the first one and uh, today, I just, that's, that's what I did. We made a small adjustment between motos, that helped too. My body was clear and I, uh, I just was able to, to put the power down the whole time. So that was a lot of fun, I had to pass a lot of guys. 
Thank you, Monster Energy. Star Yamaha on the day. That's our first motor cross overall. So super neat for us. And uh, what an awesome crowd today, too. Yeah, well, they were cheering because they had a lot to cheer for. Let's show you with our Lucas Oil race recap. Unbelievable race here in 450 Moto number two. Starts with a Ryan Dungey hull shot. Crowd immediately went wild. That's exactly right. That's what they wanted to see. And that's a perfect shot by Ryan and got him up front. And he got Anderson, Sexton, Roxon, Craig all right there. Honda boys start battling. Here's Roxon versus Dungey for the lead. Yep. Kenny Roxon made his way around him right here. And Ryan Dungey tucks in behind him. But shortly coming behind him is number 23, Chase Sexton. Yep. And it would soon be a Honda 1-2. Big move by Sexton. Got a scrub right across the front to take over the lead here. And it looked like at that point he was going to be able to get away. But no, Eli Tomac was lurking from third. Yep, one mistake right there in front of the mechanics area. Kenny Roxon goes back around. And then as he plays defensive against Kenny, then Eli Tomac tucks on the inside and makes his move. A uh, three-rider duel for the spot. Tomac, after making the pass on Sexton, mistake by Roxon, takes over the lead. Outstanding run right there. Gets the power to the ground, gets a wheel on the ground quicker than Kenny Roxon and gets going underneath him. Dungey got going and he would actually pass Roxon. This would be for third in the moto. And at one point that would be third overall. They had pulled away from Anderson. Yep, perfect line selection on the inside there. Just kind of nimble, nimble run down the inside. And then unfortunately uh, Ryan's teammate right here, Aaron Plessinger catches his knee. Pulls off the track. You can tell he's in a lot of pain. Yeah, we hope that's not uh, too, too bad. Tomac, once he has the lead late to high point, no answers. Lucas Oil finish line. He's got himself the overall win with the Moto win. That moves him into solo possession of third all time with his 28th 450 overall of his career. Let's send it back to Jason Thomas on the podium. Chase Sexton, second overall. Keep the red plate. It looked like he got a little bit flustered there mid moto made a couple of mistakes but the good news is we're on to round five and you're still the points leader yeah i uh i would just struggle overall with the chop <coughs> how choppy the track was um just didn't feel as good as first moto but eli was riding awesome i heard him behind me so i made a few mistakes after i passed kenny he got me back and then uh, eli sucked me up and passed me as well so and then honestly dunge almost got me so i just had to put my head down <coughs> and uh just keep going so I uh, rebounded pretty good and just uh, overall rode solid today. And it was absolutely. And although he doesn't get the overall win, it allows him to maintain the points lead. Tomac leapfrogs Roxon. Roxon ended up fourth overall, and Tomac outscored him by 13 today. So now Tomac is second and 13 down on Sexton. Anderson slips a, a little bit more than one moto back in points. Fourth, Dunge into the top five in points. We'll send it back to JT. Jason Anderson, up and down day, fastest qualifier, but then it seemed like every time I looked up, you were going forward, backwards. I didn't know if you were going to make it on the podium, but you have to be happy to uh, to be up here at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, that second moto was a struggle for me. I was trying to keep pace with those guys, but I couldn't find the flow they had. You know, it was uh, to do the speed, I was kind of forcing it. So um, it was a little frustrating that second moto, but the first moto in practice was good. So uh, take the positives and try and uh, figure it out and be back. and. I want to win some more and see if we could do it, but these guys are riding good. So uh, thank you to the whole Kawasaki team, Monster, Alpine Star, Arrow, Scott Goggles, and uh, yeah, let's go. Awesome. Get him by the podium, back in it after a, a rough go last time out. And uh, it was close. Three points between three riders for that final podium spot. Ryan Dungey almost had the dream podium. Not quite, but we're still going to send it down to the podium and learn a little more. JT? Kenny Roxon showing a lot of fight today, and you said all along you just want to be in it, put your heart into it, and you can see it out there. You can see so much effort in your riding today. Yeah, a little bit of a struggle bus here today. I, I didn't really gel with the track really well and with how choppy it was, so we got to do better as a team. Um, we're going to go back and do some work, but um, me and Dunge, dude, that was so awesome. We found each other on the track, both motos, and... Uh, after he passed me, I, I stalled it on the top of the track right there, so that w gave us a big gap, and the moto kind of went by pretty quick, and uh, I saw the two lap board, and I just wanted to freaking fight for it again, and that's what I did, and I was able to actually make, uh, you know, with a couple turns to go, make a pass happen, and uh, every point counts, so damage control this weekend, but we're going to go back, enjoy the off weekend, but uh, keep working. 
Uh, you heard the Honda guys, the choppy bumps. They were working on that uh, all day. Yeah, I talked to him, uh, Lars Lindstrom in the pits earlier, and they were having struggles, and uh, but they still did well. Got close, not close enough. There's our upcoming schedule. Let's go back down the podium. This will be a good one, JT. So Ryan Dunge, I have to be honest, when you grabbed that hole shot, I threw my microphone down and started cheering in the mechanics tower. This place was going absolutely nuts. I'm not sure if you could hear it. No, it was awesome. You know, I got a, got off to that good start, and it was so nice to just get clean air and run up there with them fast guys. And uh, a little slow to start, got past a little bit, but got in the mix, and it just felt good. And um, setup felt good, track felt good. It just was nice to be up front, just one step closer to the podium. That is many steps closer. He only 11 seconds down on the lead. And again, he was about 40 to 50 seconds at all the previous motos. What a story building here. Absolutely. What an incredible improvement by Ryan Dungey. And just a great race in here at High Point Raceway. And pleasure to be here to witness it. Awesome. Good to have you in the booth again. Brock Lever, the six-time champ for Jason Thomas. I'm Jason Wagan and everybody on the show. This has been really fun. Four winners in four rounds of Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross. We'll have a weekend off. Don't miss us at Redbud, July 2nd. Congrats to our overall winner, Eli Tomac.